Hey everybody, Bandicoot Commando here, and welcome back to Assassin's Creed 2. Did some unfinished business. Collected a few statuettes, but I decided in the end it's not worth it. Went back to Venice to get the last Codex page. And we also did the last of the courier missions. And the last... The last of the beat-up missions. So, today, we're gonna... I think this is where we're going to end it. Look at the villa. Back to normal. So first we need to go to Leonardo. Actually, before we go, let me make sure. Wait, hold on. 1959, that's when he was born. 20 years later. That took two years. That took two years. That took a year. That took four years. That took him. Took a one year. Birds of a feather. That took a year. That took a year. That took a year. That took two years. That also was in the same. Two years. If that was two years. That took a good. That took a good ten years. And this took it one year that we're gonna get on. All right, well, if I'm missing anything, at this point, it doesn't matter. I'm ready for it to end. All right, Leonardo, here you go. Leonardo, Ezio, so good to see you. How can I help you? Ha-ha, <laughs> you found another one. How exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes, we just switch these two lines and then shuffle them left. Done. That's it. I'm at my maximum health. With that, we only have two things left to do. Hold on, people. I saw them. Hold on. One of them is to get the armor of Altair. And yes, the codex wall. Okay. There we go. Put the other one here. Get that one there. There's one left. And there. That's it. The armor of Altair. Thank you, Altair, for this great gift. May it shield me from my enemies. Wow. Look at us. Look at us. We look awesome. Ah. This is what Altair would wear later in his life. We kind of look like Al Mulalum a bit. Kind of, but not entirely. And there's our sword. Our small weapon's a cleaver, apparently. Eesh, that's a big cleaver. Doesn't matter what kind of swords I use. They're all the same. Now that I think of it, there's one last thing I want to do. Oh, wait, no, not the codex pages. Um, database. We got them all. Let's see. That's the first one. Hmm. This must have been the Crusades. That's the Hidden Blade design. What follows are the three great ironies of the Assassin's Order. 
Here we seek to promote peace, but murder is our means. Two, here we seek to open the minds of men, but require obedience to a master and a set of rules. Three, here we seek to reveal the danger of blind fate, yet we are practitioners ourselves. I have no satisfactory answer to these charges, only possibilities. Do we bend the rules in service to a greater good? And if we do, what does it say of us? That we are liars? That we are frauds? That we are weak? Every moment is spent wrestling with these contradictions, and in spite of all the years I had to reflect, still I can find no suitable answer. I fear that one may not exist. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Does our creed provide the answer, then? That one may be two things, opposite in every way, simultaneously? And why not? Am I not proof? We are of noble intentions, possessed of barbaric means. We who celebrate the sanctity of life and then promote, then promptly take it from those we deem our enemies. Yeah, it looks like Richard's word has had some effect on Altair. Who were the ones that came before? What brought them here? How long ago? Centuries? Millennia? Longer still? So little remains of them. What drove them out? What of these artifacts? Messages in a bottle? Tools left behind to aid and guide us? Or do we fight for control over their refuse? Given divine purpose and meaning to little more than discarded toys. Robert de Saab may be dead, but his brotherhood survives. Though less conspicuous in appearance, I fear they remain a threat. Where once they they plow bleh, where once they proudly walk the streets, making for easier targets, now they retreat into the shadows. It grows difficult to track them. What wicked things will they weave in the darkness? Our work will be all the more complicated for it. Already there are rumors of a movement on Cyprus. I will have to investigate. It's made me realize that our tactics too must change. It means an end to our fortresses, to our pen our penjet for spectacular displays of public assassinations. We must weave our webs quietly, and we must do so differently than what we have in the past. Though I ask my brothers now to abandon their rituals, I do not ask that they abandon the Cree. This is what makes us assassins. Not the removal of a finger. Not a false promise of paradise. Not the probation of poison. Our duty is to the people, not to custom. If we must seek, if we must sneak, then we shall sneak. If we must use poison, we shall use poison. If our blades can be used without removing fingers, we shall not demand they be taken. We shall not manipulate our initiatives with lies and parlor tricks. We shall speak plainly and honestly. We shall be made anew. So there you go with the thing. I had thought Ada would be the one to lead me to rest. That I might lay down my blade and live as a normal man. But now I know such dreams are best left to sleep. Her face. I tried to banish it from my mind as I remember the days and nights during which I chased her. Templar captors across the sea. I almost got them in time. Almost. If I had been only a bit faster. Instead, I held her lifeless body in my arms. Saw the terror reflected the terror reflected in her fixed unblinking eyes I hunted each man one by one until all responsible were gone from the world but there was no joy in this no satisfaction or release their deaths did not bring her back did not heal my wounds after that I was certain I would never again feel for a woman as I had for her I am fortunate to have been wrong yeah this Ada that he mentions she plays a part in one of the uh, games on the DS which no I'm not gonna let's play why do our instincts insist on violence I have studied the interactions between different species the innate desire to survive seems to demand the death of the other why can they not stand hand in hand so many believe the world was created by the hand of a divine power 
but I see only the designs of a madman, bent on celebrating destruction and desperation. Our origins seem chaotic, unintended, purpose and being instilled solely by the passage of time, imposed first by nature and later men. Over time, any sentence uttered long and loud enough becomes fixed, becomes a truth, provided, of course, you can outlast the dissent and, and silence your opponents. But should you succeed and remove all the challengers, then what remains is by default now true. Is it truth in some objective sense? No, but how does one ever achieve an objective point of view? The answer is you don't. It is literally physically impossible. There are too many variables, too many fields and formulae to consider. We can try, of course. We can inch closer and closer to a revelation, but we'll never reach it. Not ever. And so I have realized that so long as the Templars exist, they will attempt to bend reality to their will. They recognize there is no such thing as an absolute truth, or if there is, we are hopelessly under-equipped to recognize it and so its place. They seek to create their own explanation. It is the guiding principle of their so named New World Order to reshape existence in their own image. Is it not about artifacts? Not about men? These are merely tools. It's about concepts. Clever th for them. For how does one wage war against a concept? It is the perfect weapon. It lacks a physical form yet can alter the world around us in numerous, often violent ways. You cannot kill a creed, even if you kill all of its adherents, destroy all of its writings. These are a reprieve at best. Someone someday will rediscover it, reinvent it. I believe that even we, the assassins, have simply rediscovered an order that predates the old man himself. I guess he's referring to Al Mualim. Hmm. Image about the pieces of Eden, no doubt. Addis Dionysus. Oh, Dionysus. Horus. Krishna. M Mithra. Jesus, similar stories color their lives. Too similar, I think. Divine birthright, persecution, disciples, miraculous acts, resurrection. How is it possible? Perhaps it isn't. Merely a single story told over the ages, borrowed and then changed to fit the times, evolving as our tools and language do. Is this tale born of the fact or fiction? A bit of both? Could these figures be the same person? Their life extended and transformed by a piece of Eden? Al Mualim spoke of Jesus as a real person, a mortal who had mastered the arts of manipulation. But what if he was wrong? What if these men are real, and they have walked among us so many times before? Does it mean they'll come again? Perhaps they are here now. So many questions, and every day even more. Don't know what to make of it. Must be some kind of astrological chart. The hidden blade has been oh, the hidden blade has been a constant companion of ours over the years. Some would even say it defies us, and they would not be entirely wrong. Many of our successes would n have not been possible without it. Still, the device has begun to show its age, and so I have been researching improvements beyond ending the need to remove one's finger to wield it. The first is the, ad is the addition of a metal p plate that can be used to deflect incoming blows. The other assassins believed it, it is forged of a new metal, and credit me with the discovery of the formulae included on this page. It is better that they not know the truth. I have also worked with Malik to describe new methods of assassination from on high, from ledges, and from hiding places. Basic movements, but critical nonetheless. 
the third and final improvement is the most simple. The provision of a second blade, identical in every way of the first. Should an assassin ever find himself tasked with di dispatching two targets, he need only time his way his he need only time his strike in such a way that he might react reach both at the same time. These blades will be limited in number since the metals with which we forge them remain difficult to obtain. I will need to think carefully about who shall be allowed to carry two. I see. Which reminds me. Okay, it's mostly text, okay. More text. I do plan on reading all these, so shut up. Man seeks dominion over all that he encounters. I suppose it is a natural tendency for us to aspire towards mastery of our surroundings. But this should not include other human beings. Every day, more and more are pressed into service, by deception or by force. Others, though not so firmly in prison, are made to feel as if their lives are worthless. I have seen the ways in which men persecute women, heard the cruel worlds, her heard the cruel words hurled at those who come here from another from other lands. Watch as those who believed or act differently are made to suffer. We discuss such things often, watching as we do from the spires of Masyaf. What can be done to stop this? To encourage tolerance and equality? Some days we speak of education, believing that knowledge will free us from immortality. But as I walk the streets and see slaves send off to auction, my heart grows old. When I see the husband hurl abuses and stones at his first wife, insisting she, she exists only to serve him, my fists clench. And when I see children torn from their parents so that another man might profit, send off to suffer beneath the desert sun and die. On these days, I do not think that dialogue will make a difference. On these days, I can think only of how the perpetrators need to die. It's an island. Hmm. The apple is more than a catalog of that which precedes us. Within its twisting, sparkling innards, I have caught glimpses of what will be. Such a thing should not be possible. Perhaps it isn't. Maybe it is simply a suggestion. How to know, how to be sure. I contemplate the consequences of these visions. Are they images of things to come? Or simply the potential for what might be? Can we influence the outcome? Dare we try? And in doing so, do we merely ensure that which we've seen. I am torn, as always, between action and inaction, unclear as to which, if either, will make a difference. Am I even meant to make a difference? Still, I keep this journal. Is that not an attempt to change or perhaps guarantee what I have seen? Of all the things I've seen, none troubles me more than the image of the flames. Pillars so tall that they seemed to pierce the heavens. The ground rumbled and shuddered. Mountains split, all, split and crack. Great metal towers splintered, their innards strewn about the ground, and everywhere there was screaming, a chorus so terrible that even now I feel its echo still. What is this madness I have seen? Is it them, I wonder, those who came before? Is this where they went, into the fire? into the dust? Perhaps this destructive power is what the Templars seek, that they would, might have, they might hold it over us and command devotion. What hope would we have then if they held such darkness in their hands that they could murder the world? We are obliged to hide, to be silent, to shape the course of history in secret, but some of my brothers and sisters disagree. They grow angry, insisting it is a mistake to shroud ourselves. They say it slows our work, but they do not understand the risk. To expose ourselves now would be too dangerous. 
I fear we sh would be branded madmen and attacked. So it goes, so it always has. If there is one thing I know for certain, it is that men do not learn by being told. Instead, they must be shown. They must make the connections themselves. If I say unto a man to be, be kind, be tolerant, be of an open mind, these words will wither and die long before they affect change. It would be a waste, and so we must maintain our course. Legend speaks of a golden fleece. Could the two be related? I have further refined the metallurgian, the metallurgic process, allowing for the production of a suit of armor the likes of which the world has never seen. It is possessed by of great strength, yet so light as to allow complete freedom. I alternate between wonder and fear. Here we have crafted something that will surely change the face of warfare, making those who wear it nigh invincible. Perhaps it was a mistake to create these pieces. I think it is best to erase the formulae. What if it were to fall into the hands of our enemies? The risk is too great. Must be the armor of Altair. Only ten left. I have studied the ancient pagan faiths that came before this more recent obsession with a single divine creator. They seem to have had focus more on the fundamental forces at play in the world around us, and less on arbitrary moral rules. The sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening. The tides ebb and flow. Grass grows, withers, dies, and then in time emerges from the ground once more. The air turns warm, then cools, and back again. Some hidden energy keeps us fitted to the ground and pulls us back when we attempt to leave it. Each of these movements was represented before by a god or goddess, each force given a face, but recognized as something distinct and powerful, which is not to say that there were not connections between these forces, a pathalon of individual spirits, of rules, invisible hands guiding the, pros the progress of the world around us. And so we hear there was an attempt to categorize, study, explain, and understand the way things work, even if it was flawed, but no more. Now we are asked to succumb to a far more simplified explanation. How naive to believe there might be a single answer to every question every mystery that there exists a lone divine light which rules over all they say it is a light that brings truth and love i say it is a light that blinds us and forces us to stumble about ignorance i long for the day when men will turn away from invisible monsters and once more embrace a more rational view of the world but these new religions are so convenient and promise such terrible punishment should one reject them. I worried that fear shall keep us stuck to what is surely the greatest lie ever told. One of my cult cultivate ex one may cultivate extracts from various plants found throughout the region. More exotic species can sometimes be obtained from traders and travelers but their properties are less documented and require further examination. Traditional alchemical implements can be used to distill the poison. Care should be used as certain poisons can be absorbed through exposed skin. Many are those who have lost their lives to carelessness. One's blade should be hollow according to the spec specifications listed herein. Deviation may create fractures within the metal, causing the blade to weaken and possibly break. So the poisoned hidden blade. What to make of this map? It appears to contain the entire world, not flat as they claim either, but round, like a ball, like the apple. But how is such a thing even possible? Stranger still are the lands it shows, great patches of the unknown the unexplored, so many places yet to be discovered. Are there men there? Are they like us? And if not, different how? I should like to know the answers. Perhaps in time I have the chance to travel 
to chart a course and make my way to these distant lands. Well, let's see. There's Africa. It's mostly showing Africa and Asia and Australia. America and South America aren't documented here. Assassin symbol. Some days I miss my family, or at least the thought of them. I never knew my parents well, despite them both having lived within these walls. It was our way. Perhaps they were sad, though they showed no sign. It was not allowed. For my part, so much of my youth was spent in training. There was little time left to reflect upon the this, this separation. And so, when they were finally lost to me, it seemed no different than the passing of two strangers. Al Mulalim had been as my father, and his was a weak and dishonest love. Though at the time it seemed enough, better even, or so I thought. Some day I will have a child. Such is the way of our order. I will not make the same mistake, nor any who call themselves an assassin. We shall be allowed to love our children in turn to be loved. Al Mulalim believed such a attachments would weaken us, cause us to falter when our lives were on the line. But if we truly fight for what is just, does love not make such sacrifice simpler, knowing that what we do so for their gain? It's Maria. Almost there. One, two, three, four. I have the answers now. I know the truth. I shall not touch that wretched thing again. Best that no one do, now or ever. I have tried, at last, to destroy it, but it will neither bend, nor break, nor melt. Oh, the irony. I am certain if I asked, the apple would tell me what need to be done. But even this promise is insu insufficient. Always it holds one more gift to give. I must refrain, so it shall be sealed. We will take it to the island, once theirs, now ours. There is a treasury there, hidden well, and it shall have to suffice. Risky to separate myself from the artifact that others may discover it. Riskier still to keep it close, in time I will be tempted. I am weak, we are our, we all are, who wouldn't be? Oh, the things I have seen. The tale is here inside the text. Not between the lines, but beneath them, where only our eyes might peer. Go and see it for yourself, that you might succeed where I and others have failed. Time marches on, bringing with it new discoveries and developments. And so at least one day the doorway might be open and the message delivered. They will have their profit. We are growing larger. More make their way into the fortress every day. Men, women, young, old, from different lands, of different faiths. Each tells a similar story of having discovered the first part of our creed, that nothing is true. Too often, though, the revelation undoes them. They lose their morality, certainty, security. Many are driven mad. We must guide them, help them to heal. Their minds must not be filled with more fairy tales, but with knowledge instead. Let them have answers, and let those answers be difficult and complex, such as life. Success! We have found a way to alter the structure of the hidden blades so that it can be used to launch small projectiles. It is capable of grievous damage, even from great distance. I confess the means by which I came about the discovery was risky, to say the least. But I have found that in small doses, and with a focused mind, the apple can be used without ill effect. Or so I hoped. The knowledge of projectile combat is not new to us, having been observed amongst our eastern neighbors 
their weapons were much larger and ins 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 bleh, insufficient for our needs. I have now found a way to miniaturize their designs, embedding their fiery weapon into a form that can be worn on the wrist. We also refined the formula, formula for combustible powder such that common ingredients might be used. This is a dangerous bit of knowledge, and it is best shared with only our closest allies. Well, sorry to tell you, Ezio, but history had other plans. A dark tide rises to the east, an army of such size and power that all the land is made with worry. Their leader is a man named Tum Temujin, who has adopted the title Genghis Khan. He sweeps across the lands, conquering and subsuming all who stand in his way. Whatever his motives, he must be stopped. Were I younger, I might attempt to undertake this work in secret, as I suspect the presence of a piece of Eden. But those days are years gone now. The mantle has been passed. It is time she and I spoke with our sons. We will travel there together, that they may be tested, and that this threat might be stopped. Last one. Soon I shall pass from this world. It is my time. All the hours of the day are now colored of by the thoughts and fears born of this realization. I know that the elements of my body will return to the earth, but what of my consciousness? My identity, that is to say, what of me? I suspect it will end, that there is no next world, nor a return to this one. It will be simply be done forever. Our lives are so brief and unimportant. The cosmos care nothing for us, for what we've done. Had we wrought evil instead of good, had I chosen to abuse the apple instead of seal it away, none of it would have mattered. There is no counting, no reckoning, no final judgment. There is simply silence and darkness, utter and absolute. And so I have begun to wonder, might there not be a way to stop, or at least delay, death's embrace? Surely the ones who came before were not so frail and feeble as we are. But I have sworn to be done with the artifact, to not gaze into its core. Still, faced as I am with the prospect of my end, what harm is there in one last look? And now you know. Alright. I know it's it took a while, but let's do this. Talk to Mario. Ezio! It is time, uncle. Let us finish what you and my father started all those years ago. Indeed. Perhaps now we can finally make sense of this prophecy and put a stop to whatever it is the Spaniard is plotting. We should start by locating the vault. The Codex pages will lead us to it. Let's take a look. X marks the spot. All you gotta do... Ah, uh, yes, at long last. Rodrigo Borgia, AKA the Spaniard. A dark stain on human history, Rodrigo left a trail of blood a mile wide on his quest to unify Italy under the Templar banner. Anyone who opposed him ended up in little pieces inside a sack, or, if he was in a good mood, poisoned. Once he was crowned Pope, Rodrigo, or should I say Alexander VI, used his influence to wage war with any city that held out against the Templars. And then there were the rumoured X-rated atrocities. Hundreds of courtesans brought to the Vatican by the cartload, and the Pope's close friendship with his illegitimate daughter, Lucrezia. Oh yeah, and did I mention the killings never stopped? 
Throughout all his public debauchery, Rodrigo was quietly murdering his enemies behind the scenes, consolidating Templar power for the moment when they would seize control. Not for long. You're very, you're quite old, Rodrigo. But you're no Al Mulalim. Okay, so we have to solve this. It may not look much. This is where you need to figure out. Oh, shoot. Okay, let me see. Well, obviously, I can get these. There we go. All right, now we just got to fill in the blanks. I bet you can tell what this is. What? No. Nope. Ah. So confused. Okay, there. Looks like Africa and Europe are a bit mixed up here. Nope. Mm. No, that doesn't look right. There we go. Um, that should be it. No, that's right. What am I missing? I feel like I got this, but it's not it. What are we missing? That should be like that. No. No. There's Africa. That should be Africa complete. Nope. Nope. Australia's complete. What are we doing wrong? The map here should be done. Oh, I don't need to read these. That should be right. That should also be right. I got it. I think that no. Damn it. I'm already tired. Okay, Australia looks right, but hold on. Okay, yeah, Australia's okay. Africa's fine. 
Somewhere in Europe we're messing up. Man, what is so hard about doing this? Africa looks fine. Okay. Man, it's Europe that just doesn't look right. Okay, that should be Europe. What am I missing? That's fine. America looks fine. South America's fine. There we go. Ah. There we go. I noticed the assassin symbols. It is a map of the entire world. But there are lands shown here that do not exist. Apparently they do exist. I imagine they've yet to be discovered, or rediscovered. How is this possible? Perhaps the vault will hold the answer. Do you see where it is then? No, it can't be. The vault. It looks like the vault is in Roma, then the Spaniard. This is why he became Pope. Now I understand. It's not the vault alone he's gained access to, but the staff as well. What staff? The Codex always spoke of two keys. Two pieces of Eden needed to open the vault. One is the apple. And the other is the staff. The paper staff is the second piece of Eden. For years, no, decades, we've sought these answers. And now, at last, we have them. But so too could the Spaniard. And if he does, if he finds a way into the vault, its contents will make the apple seem a trifling thing. I must go to Roma and find the vault. What are the rest of you? We'll do what we do best. Cause some trouble in the city, giving you the freedom to conduct your search. Just let me know when you are ready, Nipote. Ah, <sighs> well, we're not ready yet, though. There's one last thing I want to do. I know it's going to be a long episode at this rate, but actually no, we'll just end it. That'll do for this episode of Assassin's Creed 2. Join me next time as I do one last thing before we head off to, to the Venatican. So that is it, and I'll see you guys next time.